Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Designer. Today we're going to be experimenting with using a fiber laser to reinforce 3D prints. So recently Montport, they sent me this 100 watt Mopar fiber laser to test and review. And I've been putting it through its paces and I found out quite quickly that this is very, very powerful. And basically it can quite easily cut through steel shim stock like this. I have tested a 20 watt fiber laser before. While it can cut through thin bits of metal, it takes a very, very long time to the point where it's not really going to be a realistic use case for a low powered fiber laser but with 100 watt you can cut through things very very quickly and I kind of feel like it's something that I could incorporate into my workflow when I am making functional prints. I've been testing various different thicknesses of steel sheet and 0.2 millimeters seems to be the sweet spot of being able to get a very nice clean cut and it also not taking very long. I'm able to cut out these shapes here in literally one to two minutes. Now, the reason for this project is that I am building a bracket to hold my tablet on my indoor bike. And basically I do not want it to snap. And I've reinforced 3D prints previously and I used fiberglass, chopped fiberglass. I didn't actually have much luck with it. After about a few years of use, it was a extension bracket for a monitor. And after a few years of use, it snapped off and the monitor crashed onto my desk. It landed on my GoPro and it actually broke the screen. So that is why I've been doing all these tests this week because I wanna try and get a alternative method to reinforce a 3D print. I just wanna take a quick pause to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is the one-stop shop for makers and engineers, offering an extensive range of services, including PCB fabrication and etching, CNC machining, 3D printing, and more. Say goodbye to being limited by the tools that you have at home. PCBWay makes it easy to bring your projects to life. They cater to small quantity orders and provide fast worldwide shipping across most services. Check them out today and see how they can help with your next project. So this is the bracket, it's going to sit on my handlebar and then there's going to be another section here which is going to hold the tablet so all of the weight is going to be kind of pivoting on this and it's going to be held here. I am going to attempt to reinforce this bracket and we're going to try a few methods. So as you can see I've been testing a few designs and I'm going to go through each of the design and then we will take a look at the results. So the first design is just a standard 3D print. This is five walls and all of the 3D prints they're all five walls and 50% infill. So this is just the standard bracket that we test. I've then gone ahead and designed another version of this and we've just got some trusses in between this hollow section here. And I haven't done any sort of topological analysis on this to find a perfect place to put these. I'm kind of just drawn these trusses in where I think the, the stresses are gonna be distributed. Now the next one is an idea that I got from a Redditor. So thank you whoever posted this on the, the post that I put up. And this is the idea of cutting out the, the steel skeleton and sandwiching it in between two 3D prints. So just splitting the bracket in half and sandwiching it in between. I've just used some bolts to, to kind of keep this together. So that is one alternative that I've got. The other option that I've got is inserting a metal frame mid print, halfway through the print, and then continuing the print and essentially just kind of you know locking this metal frame halfway through the print. I've got two versions. One is just a solid skeleton like this, and one is a skeleton with trusses in it. So I just thought it'd be interesting to see if there is any difference between those. And then lastly, I'm gonna be experimenting with epoxy. Now the resin that I previously used when I did wanna reinforce my 3D prints was polyurethane or polyester. I've never used epoxy. And we've got two options here. So first of all is I've just shelled out the, the original design and I've just filled it up with clear epoxy. And then the other design, and this is what I originally come up with when I was thinking about you know, reinforcing it with the use of fiber laser, is I've got the truss design uh, in a skeleton shell here and I've inserted it halfway into the print and then I filled it all up with epoxy resin. So it's, it's kind of locked in there. Now for the test setup, it is just a very simple contraction. I've just got some two by four lumber clamped into the table here and we've got a bolt going through which will lock in the bracket and then that is resting on another bit of tubing that is mimicking the handlebar. I've attached a crane scout onto each of these brackets and measured how many kilograms they can hold before breaking. So pause it here and leave in the comments below what you think is gonna be the weakest and what you think is gonna be the strongest. Now let's jump into the results.
So some really interesting results there. It's really cool, I got just over a 200% increase in the weight that that bracket can hold just by adding a thin bit of steel sheet here. I guess there's probably nothing stopping you from just cutting out more of these, sandwiching them together and placing them in the mid print, or you could even layer them up and pause the print at multiple stages. And I guess that would probably result in a even stronger print as well. The results didn't surprise me too much. It was interesting to see that the solid metal that was placed mid print actually come out on top more than the epoxy field with, with the metal reinforcement. I thought this was probably gonna come out on top and they were pretty close. I've got a few ideas as to why these two versions of the mid print with the, the steel added into the middle of the print performed differently. And I think it's probably to do with the process that I used. So when the print was paused, what I did to hold this metal sheet in place is I just put some dabs of super glue and I pushed it down onto the print, left it for a few minutes and then I would resume the print. Both worked fine, but I guess that the solid print, it had basically more surface area for the super glue to make a bond between the metal and the plastic. And we can kind of see that in how it's broken. You can see that actually the, the solid metal piece, it's really just snapped. Whereas you can see that the, the one with the truss design that was placed mid print, it has kind of sheared apart in the middle, the, the layers. So it's kind of like cut through them because I'm guessing that this steel sheet could move around as the stress was applied. Now I'm actually quite happy with that result because cutting out the steel sheet, uh, just the solid design without the trusses is actually quicker and there's less post processing to do to pull out all of those triangles from the trusses. And I thought that this mid print reinforcement style it's probably gonna be one of the most annoying ones to do, but actually it's pretty easy. Just in Orca Slicer, you right click on where you want the to add the, the pulls and it will add it into the G-code. And then as I said, yeah, I just put a few dabs of super glue, pushed it down, held it for a few minutes. With the 5M Pro that I've got, you've got a tiny little bit of evidence of layer shifting, but it's really minimal. And the prints turned out really nice. So hopefully you found these results interesting. If you've got any ideas for other ways you can maybe reinforce this or other ways you could use a fiber laser with 3D printing, let me know in the comments below. Thank you to Monport for sending me this laser to test. I've been very impressed with it so far. It is an absolute beast. And a full review will be coming out on this fiber laser soon, so stay tuned for that. That is it for today. Thank you for watching and I will catch you later.